Hey everybody, this is Candice Adewale of The Love You Lifestyle, and I am back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about love marriage versus hypergamous marriage, and can you love your husband? I was triggered to make this video in response to a Facebook post that I saw and I just felt that I needed to say something regarding this topic. So what I've noticed is the new mantra on the level up streets are, I'm not married for love, I'm married for a bag, quote unquote. I'm hearing this repeated over and over and over again in a variety of different ways and from a variety of people. And the things that I'm hearing verbally regurgitated make me question or make me ask a few things, a few questions. One, I wonder how many of these women who are regurgitating this message have actually been married at least one time or even seriously engaged to a man with a ring on their finger at least once. And how many seven-figure earners or hypergamous wives do these women actually know because they are so busy repeating this mantra of, I'm not going to love my husband. Love is not important. I'm just marrying for the bag. Okay. What I really think we need to realize is that there are extremes on both ends, on both sides of the pole of the fence. Of course, it's not smart to enter into marriage like a love-struck teenage girl whose only care in the world is the pitter-patter of her little heart and her wet panties. We also need to understand that for certain groups and communities of women, this whole conversation of uh, hypergamy and not accepting struggle love. It is a very new concept. Hypergamy is a new concept for them. And so, you know, I'm I'm hoping that within a few years that the dust will settle and people will settle up into their level up journeys and they can find their middle ground. So um, I also realized a few things too is that some groups of women make every single thing a religion and end up diving into the deep end, no matter what it is that they're getting into. So these are some of the things that I have kept in mind while, you know, while hearing these things. I'm, I'm understanding where it's actually coming from. The re One of the other reasons why I decided to cover this topic is because I have so many women in my inbox really concerned about this new gospel that you shouldn't quote unquote love your husband and feeling attracted to him is a sin. Um, they're scared to say it out loud or line for fear of being torn to shreds by these so-called feminine women in these feminine groups. But the truth is, is that they really want to be with a man they respect, feel attracted to, and actually love. And, um, you know, one woman wrote me very concerned about not wanting to, not loving her husband. She doesn't have any family. And she's just like, I want to experience love. And I feel like I'm wrong. And that really hurt my heart to hear her say that because um, I feel like it's very irresponsible of some educators out here to be so one-sided and so left-winged when talking about this particular subject of loving your husband. And for the record, I want to say, of course, it's okay for you to love your husband and to actually be attracted to him. I believe that you can and should love your husband and actually enjoy having sex with him. This whole idea of living in a loveless marriage, laying on your back, having sex with a man that repulses you night after night, 
I mean, your lips curl up and pinch at the mere thought of performing a BJ on him. Is honest for God one of the dumbest and unbalanced things I have ever heard so far (laughs) when it relates to this topic? And not everyone is built for that. There are, you know, the, the small population of women who are built in de- um, for and down with what I like to call gangsta hypergamy or extreme hypergamy. And what I have to say to those women is good for you. But those women should not shame the women who want hypergamy and want to actually enjoy the man laying on top of them at night. And for the record, hypergamy does not have to mean that a man is making six, seven, or eight figures. If you have any questions or doubts in your mind as to what hypergamy really is, please check my video uh, for the definition of hypergamy and the missing conversation. I will try to put a link to that video somewhere on the screen. So just look for it. I think the key here is, again, having a balanced approach. Number one, not to let your emotions lead and guide your relationships during your dating phase to the point that you do not properly vet your potential suitors or ignore serious issues like him not being able to take care of you and your future children or current children if you have, if you're a single mom or a single divorced mom are missing things like he's abusive, including emotionally being emotionally abusive. Um, I think what happens is sometimes you get that butterfly feeling in your stomach towards someone and you feel super attracted to them. And what happens is you just start to lose your natural mind. And some women allow those chemical emotions to lead the way and become more important than vetting and making sure that this is actually a high quality man. And for the record, a man who has money can very well be low quality and dusty. Money, money in the bank does not make a man not dusty. His behavior could be extremely dusty with a lot of zeros in his bank account. That's just for the record. Two, understand that love changes and grows over time. What your love looks like at the beginning of a relationship will not look the same 10, 20 years down the road as you move past the giddiness of new love and all those great chemicals. So, and and, you know, I find that love can actually deepen over time once you move past all of those things, if you are nurturing the relationship the way that it really needs to be. And it can be a, uh, I I think, a very, very beautiful thing to, to enjoy that whole process of loving your husband and, and building uh, a life together. Number three, I think that a lot of women need to work through their girlish desires for a Disney type romance in which your marriage will somehow be perfect every single day and not go through highs and lows. And that really requires you learning what love actually is. Love is an action word. And it's going to look a little bit different when you are a woman that is focused on living a consciously feminine lifestyle and creating yin-yang harmony in your marriage. So loving from a feminine way or a feminine point of view and him loving you in a masculine way is what is going to create that yin-yang harmony. And again, the key word is actions, not necessarily emotions, although you can have the emotions there and it's okay if you do. Remember, you're going to get sick. He's going to get sick. Parents die. 
Sometimes children die. Economies crash. People come up come up with serious, you know, health issues. All sorts of things happen in life that can change the relationship dynamics. And so you need to keep all of these things in mind when you are considering what love really looks like and feels like. And and also understanding that you have to recreate those types of uh, feelings. You have to work in order to keep the relationship fresh and new and alive. And that it's going to mature and grow, provided that there's a strong foundation there from the get-go. Number four, enjoy feeling attracted to your man or the men that you're dating. Um, I feel like those feelings are there for a purpose and that it's not a bad thing for you to want to feel those things or to enjoy feeling those things if you do. It feels amazingly beautiful and, and juicy to feel that level of attraction. And so I want to give you permission to enjoy that. And, and while you're enjoying that, just understand that there are layers to that attraction that just go beyond the physical. I think the one interesting thing about myself is, is that I do not have a type uh, when it comes to the men that I am dating. Uh, if you were to see pictures of the men that are dating, they, I mean, their looks are all over the place. And what I find attractive about one man may be completely different about another man. And so I want you to also focus on that too, if you're struggling with that concept. It's just making sure that you're not being overly picky if you're finding yourself struggling regarding loving or you're not feeling attractive. That's just a little side note there. Five, focus on securing your position and not just a bag. This means, and I really want you to grab a pen and paper here, A, create streams of income for yourself that are in alignment with being a mom and a wife. I think every woman uh, should have something that she can use to create some sort of income for her, herself for a rainy day fund, for that just-in-case fund. You don't want to be just out here stuck should something happen in the future. B, focus on building alliances. Build alliances within the Level Up community. Build alliances with other hypergamous wives um, so that you can uh, have a support team with this lifestyle and, and make sure that they're actually feminine because some women may be married hypergamously. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're feminine. That just means that they understood how to get a man with money. C, be aware of what's going on in your marriage regarding the finances. D, do proper marriage negotiations. I'll actually post a few marriage negotiation questions in the comment section of this video so that you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about. But marriage negotiations are really important because they allow you to negotiate in a very feminine way the terms of your marriage so that it is a win-win situation and thus making it even easier for you to love your husband. Consider getting a prenuptial agreement that, of course, an attorney should look over and should be favorable for both you and your future husband. Also know what a postnuptial agreement is. And G, have insurance policies and your name on important things like deeds. Last year, I had the pleasure of interviewing famed divorce attorney Jeff Landers, who has written two best-selling books called Divorce, Think Financially, Not Emotionally, and How to Protect Your Financial Well-Being as a Stay-at-Home Mom. I highly recommend 
that you ladies read both of those books because they really help you to understand how to negotiate the terms of your marriage should you become pregnant. And also, it gives you a lot of insight on how wealthy men become very petty in the event of a divorce and where they like to stash money. So please, please, please get those books. They're on Amazon in both uh, paperback and Kindle. So six, I truly believe that for love to be maintained in a marriage and grow, mature, like mature growth, there must be yin yang harmony. And the formula that I have come up for that is the receive plus glow plus grow equals feminine overflow. And what that means is when a woman is being poured into, she receives. She's in that feminine, inner, energetic mode of receiving. When she's receiving from a good man, she's being protected. She's being provided for. She's being treated gently. All of those great things. Her feminine gifts start to flow. And it's like a steady flow of her feminine gifts into the relationship that have absolutely nothing to do with money. When she is flowing, she really starts to glow. She, you know, you can tell when a woman is well watered, when she is being taken care of. It, there's just a certain glow about that woman. And when she's glowing and she's flowing, she's able to nurture her husband, any children, and the home environment, which in turn triggers him and motivates him to keep giving, keep doing, keep protecting, keep providing. And it's this beautiful synergy that is created. And it's a cycle that's beneficial for both parties and creates a lot of love and harmony. What I think that this new gospel of love is trash and you shouldn't love and shouldn't love your husband, I, what I really think that it will end up creating in the long run are a group of women who cross the line of emotional control and dark feminine energy and possibly move into the, the realm of being emotionally unavailable, which is extremely unhealthy. Um, I know I would not want to have a not even a friendship with man or woman who is emotionally unavailable. And I think that the women who haven't reached a certain level of emotional maturity, a certain level of depth and confidence in their femininity are particularly susceptible to becoming emotionally unavailable and falling victim to this new gospel that is being preached. It, and in all actuality, most of the women that I know that are in hypergamous marriages actually do love their husbands very much. I mean, I have a nice circle of friends. I mean, even one of my good friends is um, married hypergamously to an attorney that she met in the law firm that she worked in as a paralegal. Her dad just so happens to be a senator. I'm not going to say more than that because I don't want to reveal her um, her identity. But, you know, I have a nice circle of friends whose husbands make seven figures and they actually love their husbands. Now, some of them have more seasoned marriages. And so I'm really blessed to be able to have a personal um source of knowledge when it comes to hypergamous marriages and how that really looks, especially if you've been married long term and things like that. And so, you know, my one dear friend, she gives me the 411 on a lot of topics because she understands what it means to be with a high powered man. Now, I for for the record, I used to practice Islam. So I do know quite a few women who didn't get the chance to do traditional dating with their husbands, 
But the one thing that they all said is that they did feel a sexual attraction to their husbands, respected him, and did enough vetting to feel comfortable marrying him within three to six months of courting. And I think that if you have that up front, that and you have a strong foundation and that you can you can uh, nurture that foundation and your husband's doing what he's supposed to do, a tremendous amount of love can definitely grow. I know that love is not a requirement for marriages in some countries, but as a woman who has traveled and knows a lot of people from many of these countries, the unspoken truth is, is that there are many miserable souls in these loveless marriages. I mean, money counts for something. It counts for a lot because I believe like the, the number one or two reason for divorce are financial reasons, but it's not everything. And so I don't want women to go into these marriages thinking that money will be enough to satisfy their souls when in fact they might just end up in the long run empty shells of, um, uh, of their former selves. And, you know, at the same time, I don't want women to go into marriage ignorantly, ignorantly also, and, and just skip the whole vetting process. Again, I, I realize that love marriages are a fairly new concept, especially now that women are no longer considered property to their fathers and are able to be educated, earn money, and legally hold property in their name. And that focusing on love as the primary prerequisite for marriage is mostly what poor and working class poor do. So I don't want that either. All I really want in the end is just to be the voice of balance in all of these different conversations that are being had because there's just so much noise out here on these love, love streets. And I just want you all to find the peace and the balance that you need because the goal of the woman who's living a consciously feminine lifestyle is to experience jo- joy, flow, growth, peace, and love in every area of life. So I hope that I have shed some light on this issue. I hope that I have given some of you all peace of mind when it comes to this issue. And of course, I would like to hear your thoughts and feelings in the comments. So please, please, please let me know. I want you all to like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this video, and of course, follow me on Instagram. All that information will be in the information box. I want you all to have a wonderful day wherever wherever you find yourself on the planet. Stay blissfully feminine. Ciao.